Ladies and gentlemen, I think this is now my sixth uh, appearance at uh, your annual presentations. Um, so it's very difficult for me each year to come up with a, uh, a new speech. I can't just dust off the previous one because uh, I'm sure you uh, you tripped me up on that. But this has been a, a momentous year for cricket, uh, 2019, culminating, I think, with the, this trophy. Uh, it's also a testimony to uh, the influence that Mount Cricket Club has in, uh, in this country, that they can manage to get the World Cup here. And I have to tell you, this is the first time that I've actually seen it. <laughs> so, so, huge respect to uh, Apple and uh, the rest of the, the, the team here for managing to get that trophy here. And uh, actually, normally when I get asked if I'll have my photograph taken, I think, oh, here, here, here we go again. But I was actually quite pleased at the beginning of tonight to be asked to have my photograph with the World Cup because it is very special. Uh, we've been, as a country, we've been so close on, uh, on a number of occasions. And uh, to not only win it, but win it in a, such a thrilling way, uh, I think, probably won us new friends um, and probably a new audience for, for the great game of, of, of cricket as a result. I think we also have to remember how well the New Zealand team um, uh, took that defeat. They were ever so modest, ever so humble and ever so gracious. I think that sends a strong message to the rest of us that whilst we want to win at things, when we don't quite win, then we have to accept that in good grace and congratulate the opposition. Because it, it is sport at the end of the day. And there are, believe it or not, other things that are a little bit more important than sport. So it's a great year for, up, for, for us. At Headingley, we opened a new 18 million pound uh, facility, uh, the Emerald Stand, uh, and we refurbished the old uh, Headingley Pavilion. And that's enabled us to open our doors a little bit wider. And I'm delighted to say that we are now able to host uh, Asian weddings where uh, um, the party can bring in their own chefs. And that's such a change uh, from how things have been in the past at, at Emerald Headingley. But back to Mount Cricket Club. Again, you've had a marvellous year uh, on the field. Um, I'm particularly keen on how you've um, risen to the challenge to develop girls and women's cricket within your club and uh, you've been flag bearers in that respect and also supporting those with disabilities and you know please continue that great work that, that you are doing i'm also very pleased with the the efforts that you've been making with all stars and next year the ecb have launched uh, uh, the dynamos uh, which is 8 to 11 year olds and I trust that you will be encouraging those girls and boys uh, to, to participate in di Dynamo's cricket. And yes, Abdul, I did hear what you said. So I'll make this pledge next year, any child that is playing All Stars or Dynamo's cricket for Mount Cricket Club can have a free ticket for themselves and an appropriate adult to one of the We look after 740 cricket clubs in Yorkshire and everywhere I go people have heard about Mount Cricket Club because of the effort that you put in. There are some jealousies, some clubs say why do they get all the publicity, why do they get all the, all the attention and I just turn around to those clubs and say because they put the effort in, because they make things happen and therefore you know, I, I believe that you as a, as a cricket club deserve all the praise that you get, both locally and indeed nationally, as Tracy has highlighted, uh, highlighted today. The one weakness that you have as a club, and Tracy and um, uh, uh, thank you, have said, have said and highlighted, is your facilities. And without trying to be political, because I, I have to stay out of politics, but one of the issues that we have, and Hanif was on the sporting board for six years, 
is that a lot of the funds that have come into cricket over the, the years to improve facilities have come as a result of lottery funding. And of course, we all recognise that clubs with um, a, a Muslim membership do not wish to take any monies that have come through gambling or lottery in any shape or form. And I recognise that local authorities really do not have any money. Now the ECB are, have, have got set aside some more money for club cricket for the next five years, but it, it's not a huge amount, but it's more than it was. And it dawned on me, listening to some of the conversations, that when hopefully Tracy gets re-elected, because for me, she epitomizes what a local politician should be, truly representing their community. And hopefully when she gets re-elected uh, in uh, less than a week's time, she can take on board this conundrum that we've got that you require funding to improve your, your cricket facilities and, and you deserve that funding. But the Sports Count, Sports England and the Lottery Fund are not of any use to you. So surely the government should recognise that there is this hole, there is this gap, and that a separate fund should be set aside for Muslim cricket clubs and other sports clubs to enable them to improve their facilities. Money that doesn't come as a result of, of gambling. And perhaps, Tracy, you could, you could lobby the government, whoever it may be, in a week's time to say, look, there is this gap, and why should why should Muslim sports people be penalised as a result of the way that we do funding in this country? So I hope you will take that that on on board. Um, and hopefully, you know, I was talking to Hanif just now because I've been to the Field of Dreams in other, a number of times. And it is a field, and you do have dreams. But he didn't realize that you had two water cabins, and that's it. And in the past, you've suffered uh, burglaries, you've suffered from arson attacks, and yet, through your great resolve as a club, and through the great leadership that you have from Chairman Hanif, uh, and Yusuf, and, 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 and Sully, and Abdul, you know, you make things happen, you roll up your sleeves and you get stuck in again. And surely, to God, we m must find a mechanism whereby you will receive the appropriate funding from central government, supported by the ECB, to enable you to fulfil your dreams of having a proper clubhouse, which will be part of the community, available to the community 365 days of the year, yeah. but somewhere where you can fulfil your dreams and your ambitions on the cricket field, because the Halifax League have, League have totally embraced you, as you have embraced the Halifax League, and they would like nothing more than you to have great cricket facilities to support your great team. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you for that message. Uh...